Today's first guest is Dr. Matt Budoff, a leader in the field of cardiac CT scans. He's the director of the Diagnostic and Wellness Center at Harvard UCLA, and he's an associate professor of medicine at the UCLA School of Medicine. He's considered the world authority on cardiac CT scanning. Dr. Budoff has done extensive research in preventive cardiology and is here to explain exactly what a CT scan is and why we all should know about this exciting technology. Welcome, Dr. Budoff. Oh, pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. You know, this is one of my favorite topics, and thanks to you because, I mean, you taught most of us in Southern California, if not the world, about cardiac CT. And I wonder if you can, there's a lot in the news, a lot of confusion about 64 slice versus electron beam CT. I wonder if you can just go back and tell us what a CT scan is and of the heart, what, and what we do with it, and who should have it. Sure. Uh, CAT scanning um, is basically just slicing the body like a loaf of bread. So it takes a lot of very thin cuts. And a 64 slice CT scanner can take 64 slices at a time. So it takes a large amount of data. So it kind of takes like almost like a whole loaf of bread at a time as you move through the body. The problem is that the heart is beating very rapidly and the 64 slice CT is not the fastest picture. So the electron beam is much quicker and allows us to take very, very detailed cuts without any motion. So we get very still images of the heart itself. Now, in your practice, how are you using the, the electron beam CT versus a 64 slice? In our practice, people ask for a 64 slice for screening and uh, we usually have been using it for a diagnostic test where we inject contrast or dye. How do you do it in your practice? So we basically do the same thing. We look at what's going on with the patient. If it's a diagnostic test, that means they might have something wrong with them and we're more willing to use extra radiation and the dye with extra cost involved to take the picture. If we just want to screen patients who might be healthy and the answer might be everything's great, we don't want to give them a lot of radiation to say, oh, everything was fine, but now you just got a big dose of radiation. The electron beam scanner affords a much lower radiation dose, so it's much better for a screening test. Can you explain the coronary calcium score and what it means? I think there's a lot of confusion about what you eat in coronary calcium, and explain that to us. Sure, so coronary calcium is like the tip of the iceberg as far as plaque goes. You can imagine that you have all of this gunk building up in your arteries, mm -hmm. partly because of age, partly just because it takes you know cholesterol and diabetes and high blood pressure, lay down damage in the arteries, and coronary calcium kind of measures part of that plaque. So. The calcified plaque is what's already kind of healed or sc scar tissue that's built up in the arteries. So if you have none, that means you have no plaque in your arteries and your arteries are clear. So it's kind of like golf where low score wins, but the <laughs> ultimate winners are those people who get zeros, who get a score of zero. As the score goes up, we get more and more plaque. It's really just a, an amount of plaque. The higher the score, the worse off the, the plaque is, and the scores in the hundreds are moderate, and scores in the thousands are severe. What do you do with, with the calcium score? Somebody comes in, they, get a, they have calcium or plaque in the arteries, and I always tell people to think of calcium and plaque as the same thing. What do you do with the results, which is an important part of any test? Right, so I, I see the presence of plaque or calcification as the, the evidence that they do have some, some damage or buildup in the coronary arteries. So I start to look at their risk factors. Do they have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes? And I try to address those to get their cholesterol under control or their blood pressure under control. And at the same time, think about their global health, talk about diet and exercise. And I always add an aspirin tablet to try to make sure the blood stays thin so they don't get that plaque breaking free and causing a heart attack. Now, I know you were chairman of the committees on for the American Heart Association about who should have a electron beam CT for coronary calcium, who should have a 64 slice for a diagnostic test. So what are the recommendations that you came up for? What type of person should have and what age group uh, should be having these types of scans. In my mind, I break down people without any symptoms, so a screening test where right. you don't know you have a problem. So that would be the, the calcium score, the electron beam scan. If you had chest pain or your treadmill exam is abnormal, then you'd go for the diagnostic test. And I take those asymptomatic patients and break them into three groups. Low risk, younger patients, healthy patients, no risk factors, no high blood pressure or family history of heart disease. And I would say they probably just need to maintain a healthy lifestyle. The high risk patients at the other end of the spectrum, patients with known heart disease or diabetes or multiple risk factors, I think they need to be treated. 
And it's all the people in the middle, 40% of the adults who need to get a heart scan to find out, do they have heart disease? Are they really higher risk than they think? Or do they not have any heart diseases? Their score is zero, and they're actually better off than they thought, and we don't have to worry about them. The group that I feel very gratified in treating, the people who have um, a normal cholesterol, and they have high blood pressure, or, the, or they're obese, and they get the scan and they have lots of plaque. And here they have this normal cholesterol, like half the people with heart attacks. What do you do with those people? Yeah, so I think there's a big disconnect among patients and even among some physicians where they feel that the main risk factor is cholesterol. And if the cholesterol is low, they can't have heart disease. And if the cholesterol is high, they have to have heart disease. And cholesterol, as you know, is only one of maybe 20 or 30 risk factors. We haven't even defined them all yet. Right. So I take patients who have plaque and I put them on aspirin and I put them on a cholesterol pill, even if their cholesterol is normal, because right. lower is gonna be better for them. They've already developed some plaque in the arteries. Does yeah. exercise offer an added benefit as well as um, the cholesterol medication? What does exercise do in conjunction with medication to lower cholesterol? Yeah, I mean, exercise is probably one of the best things that we can do for our patients and, and advise to our patients. The problem is getting them to exercise is a lot <laughs> harder sometimes than getting them to take a pill, but exercise raises your good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. It lowers your bad cholesterol. It makes you lose weight, so your propensity for diabetes and high blood pressure go down. So exercise is really a lot of topics. It covers almost every topic with heart disease and you live longer with with if you exercise. The problem is people say well if I have to exercise so many hours and I'm only going to live so many extra hours I'd rather not spend that next exercising. time exercising. <laughs> right? So a lot of people don't exercise but even walking a little bit taking the stairs instead of the elevator from time to time parking maybe not right next to the opening of the of the supermarket but a couple rows back. You know it's such a, an important topic to me because this is like the people this is like the mammogram of the heart an electron beam CT for coronary calcium people believe in mammograms people believe in colonoscopy for colon cancer they believe in pap smears they believe in rectal exams for prostate and this is really the disease that's going to kill half of us and it's really the mammogram of the heart and, and you've been I mean, you've been in the forefront of this for 15 years. You were like the, the lone voice in the woods saying this is really the, an important test. You know, I really congratulate you. I've always, uh, you've stood out and you've done really quality research and you really brought this to the forefront of an important test. And I think, you know, I, I'm really grateful that you're on the show to spread the word because you really are the, most people believe, the world's authority on this. And you've done a lot of hard work and you deserve a lot of credit for it. And I think we could save a lot of lives by spreading and doing these tests more frequently. I appreciate that. I yeah. just want to make sure people understand also that we think about heart disease as a male disease, as a male Good predominant point. disease. And now more than half of all, all people suffering heart attacks are women. More than half of all people suffering strokes are women. And more wow. than half of all people having heart failure are women. And really? of course, and, yeah, and more than half the people dying of any of these are women. So women now make up a majority, more than 50% of the people suffering from heart disease. And part of that is they're living longer Ah. But part of it also is that they're getting heart disease and we're not treating them as diligently as the men. So I think right. the mammogram of the heart is going to apply equally to men and women, not right. mammograms of the breast for women and mammograms of the heart for men. We have to think of them as, right. uh, for, the, for heart disease at least, right. as an equal opportunity killer. So it's never too early to start doing those sit-ups and those crunchies. That's right. right. Exercise and other things are going to be important. Great. My, this, thanks so much for coming. I appreciate your being here today. I should hope we can get the message out there, save lives. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for coming.